Welcome to the podcast. My name is Yuras, and as every week, I'm joined with my co-host, Rain. How are you today? Hello, everyone. I'm feeling completely okay, as always. How are you today? I'm good. Are you excited about today's topic? This one's a bit different, no? From what we usually talk about. This is a bit different, but we have once more a mysterious disappearance case. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about a young boy who vanished under very perplexing circumstances in Spain. Mm -hmm. The case is taking place in 1986. So it's an older case, but it's what Interpol has described as one of the most mysterious missing persons cases in European history. We have a boy who was traveling with his family from south of Spain to north of Spain. His father was a truck driver. His name is Andres Martinez. He was 36. They were traveling from the port city of Girona, I believe. Cartagena, sorry. I don't know why I said Girona. It's Cartagena. They were traveling from Cartagena in the south of Spain to Bilbao in the north of Spain. And Andres, the truck driver, took his whole family with him on that particular trip. He was transporting sulfuric acid, a very dangerous substance to humans, a substance that will burn your skin. It's the same substance that Walter White used in Breaking Bad to dissolve bodies to get rid of evidence to get rid of remains so that's the type of a cargo that he was delivering and somewhere after the midpoint of their route they had a very serious car accident well truck accident as andres for currently unexplainable reasons went into the opposite lane of a highway in the mountain pass right after madrid so right after passing that midpoint of their journey. Mm -hmm. And he basically had its head first into an opposing truck from a different lane. Andres and his wife, Carmen Gomez, who was 34, died immediately. The weird thing about this case is that the 10 year old boy, Juan Pedro Martinez, his remains have never been recovered from the crash site. And it's uncertain what actually happened to Juan Pedro. Do you have any thoughts about it? This is definitely spookier than our previous cases. And I don't know what happened there. What do you think? I don't know what happened there either. But there are certain details that we can take into account when we evaluate the case. Mm -hmm. And I think we could jump into it. Let's go. So the first thing that I would like to bring up is the timeline of events, because I think it's important for us to understand Mm -hmm. what actually happened leading to the car accident. So as I've mentioned earlier, Juan Pedro was... This was was the 10-year-old boy, right? The 10-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. So Juan Pedro essentially was a very good student at school, and as a reward for his good grades, his father, Andres, decided to take him on one of his trips. And uh, since the boy never seen Northern Spain, Mm -hmm. he was really excited to go on this trip with his father. So Andres also asked his wife, Carmen, to join them because he wanted someone to watch over Juan Pedro as he was unloading and loading the truck. Understandable. That makes sense. Yeah. So... On top of that, Juan Pedro, the 10-year-old boy who's missing, was actually really interested in the landscape in Bilbao, in the Basque region of Spain, which has a completely different terrain than the southern parts of Spain, which are more of a desert-like areas. Mm -hmm. Basque region has grasslands, animals roaming, and things of that nature. So naturally, the boy was very curious. Mm -hmm. This story begins on June 
24th in the year of 1986. And it started off when Andres arrived at the city called Fuente Almo. It's a small town in southern Spain. Was this their hometown or was it this was this a different kind of area? I feel like it was their hometown. Mm-hmm. Uh, another disclaimer I would like to immediately point out is that all of this information that I'm reading here, it m- mostly comes from the very few English sources mm-hmm. that I was able to find. Because most of the information is actually in Spanish. We have TV shows in Spanish. I think there was even an, a Spanish version of Unsolved Mysteries back in the day that covered this case. Obviously, I can't really understand what they're talking about on that show, so I didn't really get any uh, notes from there. Mm-hmm. So they arrived at that city, Fuente Almo, in Andres's sister's vehicle. Because mm-hmm. as far as I understand, I understand their, the family truck was the only vehicle that they owned. So family left from Fuente Almo to the port city of Cartagena at 7 p.m. in the evening on the 24th Mm -hmm. of June. And at around nine o'clock, they were already with the load of sulfuric acid and they were already straight Uh, heading way north at that point. And this is where they took their first stop at 9 p.m. They took a stop to eat dinner at a restaurant called Uenta del Olivo Mm -hmm. in a small town called Cieza, or near Cieza. At around midnight, three hours later, they stopped again for a half an hour at a gas station in Las Padroneras in a small town of Cuenca. Now, I'm not really sure what happened after that because the timeline details are a bit hazy, Mm -hmm. but I do know that the next stop that they took was actually a gas station near the entrance of Madrid. And if you would look at the map, Madrid is in the middle, in the the center of Spain. So at this point, they already have traversed half of their route. And they arrived there at 3 a.m. So their, their journey began at 7 p.m. the previous night. So 7 p.m. until 3 a.m. At this point, I think that Andres had already been driving for eight hours, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So understandably, he decided to take a nap. So in this gas station, Andres actually took a nap for an hour and 13 minutes. After he took the nap and got a little bit of his energy back, the family went back on track. They proceeded to leave the Madrid district and they were heading up north towards the Basque County. Their next stop was in a bar called Aragon. It's near Cabanillas and it is the beginning of the mountain pass. They stopped there at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. They decided to get dinner there. The waiter who served them dinner actually remembered them. Mm -hmm. The waiter remembers talking to the family and remembers that the parents ordered two coffees for each other while Juan Pedro ordered a cake. Okay, so far nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. At this point, no. At this Mm -hmm. point, everything seems to go fairly smoothly in their trip. Mm -hmm. So sometime after the family left the bar called Aragon, they began their ascent to the Somme Sierra Pass. Mm -hmm. And on their ascent to the Somme Sierra Pass, they did something unexplainable. Do you know what I'm talking? I'm gonna be uh, talking about right now. I have a vague idea. Is it like uh, pauses? Yeah, the stops. So the truck stopped up to twelve times in the span of twenty-three minutes of travel time. This is completely absurd, and even more so because this was an uphill area. 
Do you think there was any traffic? There was no traffic,、mm-hmm. as far as I can tell, because law enforcement investigated whether or not traffic could have been the reason for these stops. But at that hour、mm-hmm. in the morning, it's too early for that. It's too early for that, and this road is not a very traveled road. It's just、mm-hmm. a regular highway road in Spain, but it's not necessarily a very popular road that people would be taking. And there are three lines of thinking, why they stopped three times in total. The first is that the truck may had potential malfunctions on the ascent. That's why the truck was stopping. The longest stop was actually the very last stop, which lasted twenty seconds. Other stops lasted from one to a couple seconds each. The second theory that Could explain these stops is that maybe, on the ascent, the family is actually fighting,、mm-hmm. and you know how things could change really quickly. One second the family could be having a dinner at the bar, and the other second everyone's fighting with each other. Yeah, completely possible. You have a very young boy on board,、mm-hmm. and the father must be stressful because he is ascending. With a very dangerous load, Juan Pedro could not necessarily grasp the severity、mm-hmm. and the delicate situation that his father was in, as he tried not to cause an accident because his load was very diff-、uh, dangerous,、mm-hmm. sulfuric acid. The last theory that people use to explain these twelve perplexing stops on the ascent. Is actually that potentially another vehicle was in front of Andres's truck, and that vehicle was stopping, therefore making Andres having to stop as well. And you know the story generally about this disappearance case.、Mm-hmm. What do you think is the most likely outcome? Do you do you subscribe to any of these three theories, or do you have? Something of your own that you have been holding on. Well, all three are very possible, right? In、Maybe. my in my opinion, as I think about it, I think all three are very possible. Yeah, I think I I wouldn't necessarily feel strong about either one.、Mm-hmm. What about the engine? Do you think there was some sort of engine malfunction? Maybe the brakes were broken. That would explain the stops. You were testing out the brakes. That would definitely explain the stops. The only problem with the brake scenario that the brakes went off、mm-hmm. or were not working anymore is the fact that after the crash happened, they investigated the brakes and the brakes were still intact. And I believe law enforcement were able to estimate、mm-hmm. that the brakes could not have been the problem that caused the accident. On top of that, Andres. Shortly before this trip, had his truck checked out at the mechanic, which apparently he ordered a full overhaul of,、yeah. I guess, the engine or something of that effect. So these two details would make this unlikely、yeah. that it was actually a technical issue with a car. But I would say that I still think there's a chance. Because maybe the mechanics that worked on the truck, maybe they forgot to kind of do something. I have a similar story with my car.、Mm-hmm. Once I had my car checked, and I was at the mechanic who was working very hard that day, and he it was like the ending of the day shift for him, and he actually forgot one plug or something like that in my engine. I'm not the car guy, so、mm-hmm. please bear with me. But my car was barely working. And I drove my car way back home, and I didn't understand why it was so, so bad. Yeah. And then I got back to the mechanic the other day, and this is a real story. And then、mm-hmm. he was surprised that the car was even running, and he apologized that he forgot the part. So I could see how. In, I I hope you didn't pay for it. No, no, it was、well, I definitely didn't pay、Good. for it, and and it was okay after that. But I this this、uh, story from my life kind of makes me think that. Taking the car to a mechanic, and then driving away could actually also cause a problem if、mm-hmm. the mechanic is overworked and is tired, 
and maybe a, a new part is not working well in the truck. Obviously, this is just wild speculation because I know nothing about cars. <laughs> How about the fighting? That they're fighting at this point of the journey. Do you think this has any... Um, uh, do you think this is a likely scenario that they yeah. are fighting? Yeah, definitely. Because, um, I mean, they seemed happy at the bar when they were eating breakfast. But, you know, anything can happen. Fights could start out of nowhere in the blink of an eye. So it's highly possible, yeah. I think so, too. The only thing is that the 12 stops. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, what type of a fight, what type of a family fight looks like where you stop 12 times in the ascent with a very dangerous cargo. Distraction. They were probably they were both distracted. Maybe the argument is, I don't know, escalating. I mean, that would explain it, no? That's that's that could explain it. You know, screaming, maybe there were screaming involved. What do you think about the last potential scenario that there was a car in front of the truck stopping on purpose, and that made Andres also stop with the last stop, taking twenty seconds also highly possible right because that would explain it definitely if there was actually a car bingo yeah. so we know that we know that an hour after they left the bar mm -hmm. they had already passed the town of Somesierra, which is this very small town right uh, it's essentially is it on the top it's, I'm not sure where it's, if it's on the top necessarily, I think it's close to the peak, mm -hmm. but it's adjacent to that road, to uh. that highway. And for some reason, when the truck started their descent, Andres's truck, it accelerated to the maximum. It was driving at one point at 140 kilometers per hour they were going so fast that to the people who were all on the road driving as well, they assumed that the truck had lost control of its brakes. Mm -hmm. Andres first overtook another truck by just, you know, take like just undertaking it, mm -hmm. going into the opposite lane yeah. and driving over the truck. Then he approached another truck. This time he tried the same maneuver but he came so close to the other truck that he actually knocked off a mirror off that second truck. Now, the strangest thing happened with the third truck that he approached. Instead of trying to take over, uh, go over that truck, he actually rammed into it and took it off road, basically made it kind of drive off of the main road. Do you think it was possible he was avoiding the first two cars and he couldn't avoid the third one? Or do you think it's possible that the third one probably had something important? An important cargo. Let's say maybe Juan, Pop, Juan Pedro was there. On the third truck mm -hmm. that he ran off the road? Yeah. I don't think so. After looking at the case, I just didn't really see that kind of being the logic because they looked at the third truck. Mm-hmm. And the passenger, uh, the driver of that third truck had his legs broken, and uh, there was no Pedro on the truck. Mm. So no I, traces. No traces. The other idea jump, just jumped to my head. What if, what if Andres rammed into the third truck because he wanted his own truck to stop? Yeah, to stop the descent. Descent. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. A few seconds later, the in inevitable happened. Mm -hmm. The family truck, which was a Volvo, crashed into another truck coming in the opposite direction at the astonishing speed of 140 kilometers per hour. Okay, I'm, so after he uh, yes. rammed into the truck, I'm sorry. And no, 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 yes, It yes. went off-road? He switched lanes? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think for some reason he just rammed into another truck. You have to also take into account that this uh, mountain pass mm -hmm. is not a straight line. There's a lot of twists and mm -hmm. turns. So when you're going at high speeds, I think it's very easy to accidentally hit another truck. 
And Andres and his wife Carmen died immediately. Mm -hmm. The cargo spilled onto the cockpit of the truck and started burning their skin. But they were already dead. Mm -hmm. So they didn't experience the horrible pain. Shortly after they crashed, um, the rescue teams arrived and they began pouring lime and sand on top of the acid because close to this particular highway there was a little mountain river mm -hmm. I think it was called the Duron and so if the sulfuric acid got into the river it would have caused a environmental tragedy yeah definitely. at least for the local ecosystem mm -hmm. and so the main objective of the rescue team was to check for bodies i think the second line of thinking was to immediately try to cover up the sulfuric acid before it reached the river mm -hmm. and when they first got to andres's truck they found two bodies in the cockpit. Cockpit. It was Andres and his wife Carmen. The rescue team were not aware that another boy was supposed to be somewhere there. So they didn't even look for a boy. They didn't find the boy. When the law enforcement contacted Carmen's mother, Carmen's mother asked the law enforcement, what about the boy? And that's when the rescue team realized that there was supposed to be another boy. Mm -hmm. And they went back and they didn't find the boy's remains. And this is the story of the lost boy of Somesillera. Juan Pedro, the 10-year-old boy who was at, in Aragon, eating cake with his family, just an hour before the terrible accident was nowhere to be seen and his remains have never been found. And this is the story. Let's jump to some other peculiar details surrounding this disappearance case. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the very first thing that I would like to bring up is that remember we discussed about the third truck that Andres rammed off the yeah. road and the driver of that truck was badly injured. Both of his legs were crushed, as I understand. Now, this man reported that a white Nissan truck or let's say a white Nissan van, it's not a truck, it's a van, mm -hmm. stopped at his crash site. And out of that van came out a Nordic looking man, so from Northern Europe, mm -hmm. with a blonde woman. The man introduced the blonde woman as his wife, who was a nurse, and explained that she will check you out, check if you're okay. And the checkup lasted very short period of time. And after that, that man alongside with his supposed wife the blonde woman mm -hmm. they got back into their white nissan van and they drove towards andres's truck who was a little bit down the road and to their accident scene mm -hmm. so that's the only thing that that truck driver reported now the peculiar thing here is that there's a story about two shepherds who were around the area where Andres's truck crashed. And they also reported a white van that had stopped close to Andres's crash site. Mm -hmm. Their description of the people who stepped out of the white van is a little bit more paranormal. They described that they were both extremely tall, the people who stepped out of the white van. So presumably this nordic couple mm -hmm. extremely tall and they both wore ankle length white robes mm, interesting i could imagine scientists yeah. exactly their complexions were described as very pale mm -hmm. quickly they walked over to the cab 
of Andres's truck and retrieved a package, which they bundled into their white van. Then they got into their van and sped away at high speed. Mm. So I just like to bring your attention to the fact that the initial truck driver who had his legs broken did not report as far as I understood that these two people were wearing white robes. Mm -hmm. And maybe the description of these people were two people were not as alien like as the two shepherds description. Furthermore, these two shepherds were never identified by law enforcement. And on top of that, people online in chat sources like Reddit mm -hmm. and other forums that I was able to locate, they all claim that this is just a myth in Spain. Mm -hmm. It's not the real story. So I'm actually not super convinced that yeah. these two shepherds even existed. But I will say I do believe that this white man was at the scene. Cause yeah, because if, if the driver claims that they claims that they were chances are they actually were i think so mm -hmm. but i think maybe some people just took the story and manipulated to include some paranormal mm -hmm. things that potentially were not real yeah and the package how big was this package how big are we talking about are we talking about like a human like a 10 year old boy sized lump or like a small one containing, let's say, maybe drugs or something or money. I don't think we have this detail, mm -hmm. so I can't really say for certain. But what do you think that could be, though? Do you think it could be the boy? Do you think that these alien looking like Nordic couple, Nordic couple mm -hmm. in white robes took Juan Pedro mm -hmm. and sped away or do you think it's a made-up story and you know we watched some documentaries on this case mm -hmm. do you think that this white couple ever even stopped at andres's truck i think that if they had the sense to stop at the truck driver with the broken legs they probably would have definitely stopped at the andres's crashed yeah maybe truck. maybe they're even the ones who called the police no I don't know who called the police. Yeah. I don't. I have no no idea about that particular detail, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Now, when law enforcement looked at the truck, and this was after the fact, they found that the brakes were still intact, mm -hmm. and it was discovered that Andres could have stopped, and mm -hmm. this made so it wasn't work. It was working. It was work. Allegedly, it was working. Mm -hmm. So the crazy descent that Andres took was not caused due to a malfunction according to this line of thinking mm -hmm. but Andres purposely and with intent yeah started driving at high speeds that's so bizarre because if it were an engine malfunction or a brake malfunction it would explain the stops the pauses and it would have explained this speedy descent down it would. Right? Yeah, like I agree. The, the driver, Andres, just lost control. And that's it. That's the story. Mm -hmm. But um, now that they confirm it wasn't, it, yeah. it became more, I don't know, mysterious. I guess. And chilling. Yeah. Like it's more than meets the eyes. Mm -hmm. So in the general vicinity, well, let's maybe stop at the truck first. They found children clothing that belonged to Juan Pedro inside of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe these were the clothing that he just took on the trip, maybe for a later day. Yeah, I think so. They also found cassettes uh, that are, are supposed to make a young boy or a girl fall asleep. Like children-oriented cassettes, mm -hmm. cassette tapes with like lullabies or something. I find, I find it pretty interesting because... When I looked at Juan Pedro's image, he looked way older than 10 to me. Mm -hmm, yeah. you remember? We looked at his image. He, he did look a bit taller. Tall, his face already looked, to me personally, 
way more developed than a 10 year old's face mm -hmm. he already looked like a 14 year old to me that's true like a teenager yeah. a young teenage boy but apparently he was only 10. one running shoe sole a sole of a running shoe has been found close to the crash site not inside the van no no the truck i meant yeah close to the crash site and it was determined that it was of a higher size than what Juan Pedro would have been wearing so it was speculated that that particular shoe sole was there even before the accident you occurred. think so because maybe maybe the parents uh, Juan, Juan Pedro's parents in intentionally brought or bought a bigger shoe because he's a growing boy, might as well buy a bigger shoe. That I see your line of thinking mm -hmm. here. I see how that could be a rational decision. Yeah, I remember when I was younger, my parents would used to buy me like bigger clothes. Because they knew you would grow into grow it. Grow into it, yeah. I think I, I remember the same thing. So I don't know. Maybe that could also explain the mm -hmm. shoe. Do you think that the shoe belonged to Juan Pedro? Obviously, you can't know, but I think you, you think that there is a chance. Yeah, I think so. I'm fairly convinced. But the only people who could actually confirm it were the relatives. Probably the parents only. Because who else so. would know? I don't know. Maybe the aunts and the uncles? Maybe yeah. one Pedro wore those shoes on special occasions? That is true. National newspaper reported in the following year of 87 that there were traces of heroin found inside of the tanker now this was immediately a huge line of speculation yeah that led a lot of people to think that andres was actually involved in drug trafficking in one way or another and later on as i read into some other sources the national institute of technology actually tested it again and then the results came negative Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure about that detail, about a heroin being found or a substance of heroin being found in the, in the tanker. Interesting. There was an alleged checkpoint, police checkpoint, in the Somesiera town. But this is unconfirmed and there's no way of telling at this point if there was a police checkpoint. And so this this we now arrive to the theory number one of the whole accident mm -hmm. is that andres sometime either prior to this trip or during the trip was approached by drug traffickers because spain is the gate to europe mm -hmm. for drug traffickers from south america from Colombia, a lot of drugs arrive into Spain. But what about that pass, that mountain pass? I'm not sure, but I know that they arrive in Spain, uh -huh. in the southern port of Spain, actually in Cartagena, mm -hmm. and then they go to France. And from France, they go to the rest of Europe. And uh, traffickers from Colombia like to traffic via Spain mm -hmm. because they either have relatives, connections, they also speak the same language. So it's just very convenient for drug traffickers to choose Spain as the first stop in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. So in, especially in the 80s, it was a very big thing because in the 80s, this is when the Cali cartel and Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel were in full strength. This is when they were trafficking at their highest prime time. So it's not completely out of the question that there was a lot of drug traffickers in Spain at that point. And this leads us to the conclusion that some people think that maybe Andres was approached by drug traffickers and he was asked to traffic a package mm -hmm. of some drugs through that checkpoint at Somesiera. And now this either, this one way or another, the line of thinking here is that Andres refuses to take these drugs. Therefore, the drug traffickers kidnap Pedro. Juan Pedro is now kidnapped and in that 
12th stop period, maybe in the last 20 second period, the boy is kidnapped. I don't know how it would be possible to kidnap a boy in 20 seconds, but this is what the theory is going with. And then Andres proceeds to chase the kidnappers, driving erratically through the mountain pass, eventually crashing into another truck. Mm -hmm. Trying to stay in this line or trying to stay within this theory, what if there weren't any car chasing at all? What if the drug traffickers or the drug dealers just took one Pedro and said, I don't know, like, uh, deliver this drug or and we'll release your son. And that's why he sped up. But why speed up? What's the rush to deliver trucks? Uh, to de- sorry, to deliver the drugs. What is the rush here? Why, why, why do you rush so fast? Well, Juan Pedro was taken as a hostage, probably. Yes, but if the idea is to safely traffic drugs, you want to take the approach of least suspicion. You would drive peacefully. There's no maybe reason. there was a time limit. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like. They like, uh, it, get not, back here in two hours or we'll kill your son. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was like Simpsons hit and run. That's true. Where I, you have like two minutes to collect Flanders missing items. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not that type of a scenario. Plus, the longest stop was 20 seconds. I don't think that's that timeline or that amount of time is enough to kidnap a guy I or a little agree. kid. I fully agree. I fully agree. I don't see how in 20 seconds that goes like, down. Like, um, deliver this drug or we'll kill your son. And it happened within 20 seconds. I, I don't think I so. I don't see that how it happens. On top of that, I have some additional information that I was able to find. Mm-hmm. Apparently, no similar complaint had been made by any truckers in the vicinity. No other truckers came forward to law enforcement telling that they had been approached by drug traffickers to traffic drugs. On top of that, it doesn't make a lot of sense for drug traffickers to ask Andres to traffic drugs towards the direction of Bilbao. Mm -hmm. Because Bilbao is just northern Spain. Where you really want to traffic them is France. Yeah. You want to go to a different country. You want to go to mainland, inland into Europe so you could distribute the drugs. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense to traffic them to Bilbao unless maybe that's where they wanted the drugs to be at for a while, potentially. I'm not sure, but once again, the route is not the most obvious drug route. Yeah. On top of that, I would like to say that 20 seconds is not that long of a time. Very short. A short period of time for the family, family's child to be abducted. Mm-hmm. It was an article that kind of struck me as weird one article claims and i found this that the family stated mm-hmm. so andres's family stated the relatives that, yeah relatives mm-hmm. that andres had been receiving death threats we what for a week leading up to this trip from drug traffickers who wanted to employ him as a a mule a person who would dr- drive the drugs to a different location but mm-hmm. he refused I have i have zero way of finding out if this is credible but this is what the family claimed in one of the articles i believe in 87 if i'm not mistaken well then maybe in that 20 second they literally just took one pedro still a very short period of time yeah and it wouldn't explain the speeding exactly and if there was ever a car chase, wouldn't have, wouldn't the trucks, uh, wouldn't there be any witnesses? Yeah, that's another thing. No one really reported another vehicle that Andres was chasing. Yeah. On top of that, I think we skipped a one uh, one very important detail for the audience members. They might be asking us, how do we know about the twelve stops? Mm-hmm. So Andres's truck had the tachometer that tracks the truck's activities. It's like a black box for a truck. Mm-hmm. And that's how they were able to tell that Andrea stopped for 12 times. And I would say we could put a dot 
in this theory and we could jump to an, a following theory unless you have something that you want to add to the traffickers theory line of thinking yeah just a quick question like uh out of curiosity the 12 stops it all happened in, within the mountain range but is there something similar throughout the whole trip like maybe they made five five weird stops in the middle of the road in metro towards madrid that is a good question what if it was just a driver's habit that was a good question it, but from the reports of other truck drivers, mm -hmm. they had no explanation why Andres would stop. Mm -hmm. It was bizarre. It wasn't supposed to happen. The next theory that I would like to bring in is the Good Samaritan theory. Do you know how this one plays out? Do you, have you heard the Nordic about couple, the alien couple. Either the Nordic couple or maybe even someone else, mm. for that matter. And the Good Samaritan story goes along these lines that Juan Pedro survives the accident, but he's badly injured. Mm -hmm. And the couple driving by see him and they decide to take him in and try to get him to the hospital as soon as possible. But he dies on the way. And the couple or the Good Samaritans, whoever they might be, are now scared. They don't want any questions. And since the boy is clearly dead, they tossed him out, stashed his body. And uh, that's how Juan Pedro perished. That's very interesting. But at the same time, why? Oh, why? They wouldn't be suspicious because they obviously were just good Samaritans. How come they never stepped in? Or how come? I don't know. They would obviously see the wreckage. So if they took the 10 year old boy, they would see that the parents also need some help, needed some help. That's a good point. Why did they take the boy, but they didn't really stick around for to see what the parents are doing? Mm -hmm. Because I think unless the boy was in clear need of help ASAP, mm -hmm. which he probably would be in that situation, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, so they probably did, did, if that was the case, I think they wanted to get him as, as fast to the, to the closest hospital as, as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And how come, if ever one Pedro was in that truck with the parents, how did he manage to survive? The one line of thinking was that Juan Pedro was known not to wear the seat belt. I think it's because maybe the the seat belt mm -hmm. was not made for kids. The one in the middle. Like he, maybe he was sitting in the middle. Yeah, either he was sitting in the middle or there was no way for him to even have a seat belt on. Mm -hmm. And that was a known fact apparently. And maybe in the accident he was tossed through the front mirror, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not mirror, window, and he managed to somehow survive it because uh. he wasn't wearing the seatbelt. Somehow unlikely, at least for me. It's obviously a stretch mm -hmm. for me as well. With that speed, and then he flung across out of the van, out of the truck I meant, I don't know, it just sounds a little too unlikely for me. I think I will agree on this one. Then we have uh, a grouping of uh, pedophile cult organ uh, transplant traffickers theory where maybe Juan Pedro was abducted and the father was chasing the vehicle and this would entail that this happened sometime really shortly after, sh shortly before the accident, but there's just no, no way of kind of explaining this one. Like there's not nothing connecting here. So maybe let's move past this one. It's a little too convenient yeah. to have those people waiting for an accident to happen and take the little kid. Well, I think the theory would go 
along the lines of this happening before the accident. Oh. Maybe the twenty second stop. What if Juan Pedro climbed up the wrong truck, and then that truck, I don't know, drove away, and then when the parents realized it, they were trying to find him. Yeah, that's also a a completely crazy theory, but I don't think anyone ever considered that one, and I think it is worth considering. Maybe that's why they were speeding up and. They knocked over one truck, assuming that the kid was there. But then they didn't stop to find out if the kid was there. That's true. So I don't think that was happening. Now, shortly after that, a few days later, after the accident, Juan Pedro was actually seen in Bilbao, mm-hmm. in the end destination. However, this sighting was never confirmed. Yeah. And didn't really go anywhere. On top of that, In May of uh, the following year, Mm -hmm. 87, there was another sighting of Juan Pedro. It happened in Madrid in a driving school when a blind Iranian woman Mm -hmm. had came in and asked for the professor of the driving school, the instructor, where she could find the U.S. Embassy. Now, the weird fact is that this woman claimed that she was escaping alongside with her family from a communist regime in Iran for the last six months. Mm -hmm. They had been living on charity. She was accompanied by a guide who was a young boy. And the boy was around 10 to 12 years of age and he spoke in perfect Spanish. And the instructor was surprised. How come this boy who is apparently also not from Spain, according to the blind Iranian woman, Mm -hmm. was able to speak so good in Spanish if she was only there with a boy for six months. And as soon as the instructor asked this question about the boy, the Iranian woman stopped talking and left. Oh, that's just creepy. The driving school with the boy. Mm -hmm. A few days later or sometime after, the instructor saw Juan Pedro's case on the news and was super certain that that was him, Mm -hmm. that he had seen Juan Pedro with the blind Iranian woman. And he actually went to the food shelter that the Iranian woman initially claimed where they got their food from, Mm -hmm. but he never found them there. Mm. So this is the story about... How did he end up there? With a blind Iranian woman? Yeah. I would like to say on top of that, another thing that is uh, very peculiar about uh, Juan Pedro is that Juan Pedro's face Mm -hmm. is very generic young Spanish boy face. What I'm trying to say is that I could see how Juan Pedro could be easily mistaken by another, with another kid. Mm -hmm. Juan Pedro from his images doesn't have any very distinguishing characteristics. Yeah. He looks very Spanish, but he also looks like from a distance you could see him. Mm Mm-hmm in a lot of other Spanish boys at that age. Do you know what I'm trying to say? He looks like a lot of different kids. I could see how that could have been the case. Either way, this situation with the Iranian woman is is bizarre. Yeah. Nonetheless, even if that's not connected to Juan Pedro's disappearance, it's still bizarre in my opinion. Yeah, that reaction alone from that woman, pretty bizarre. Very weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to ask you a few questions about the case, though, when we move forward. Okay. So I want to ask you, if drug traffickers were involved in this disappearance case, what would make, why would kidnapping Juan Pedro make sense for drug traffickers? I mean, Andres, under this theory, must have known the traffickers even before the trip began because I just don't see how 
20 seconds would be enough to introduce the drugs and kidnap Pedro. There's just no way. Do you think it was possible that Juan Pedro was kidnapped prior prior to the ascent to the mountain range? Yeah, I think so. Because we don't know what really happened in mm-hmm. the hour shortly before the ascent, uh, descent. Because they had dinner mm-hmm. and then... Breakfast. Yeah, sorry, breakfast. And then they approached the descent. And that happened within one hour. Mm-hmm. So that one hour is a mystery time zone for us. We don't know what happened at all in that one hour. Yeah, I mean, once again, going into that line of thinking and that theory, it might be possible that Juan Pedro was kidnapped or abducted prior to the ascent, and then the stops would be probably the parents fighting, maybe? Or them being super agitated. Yeah, frustrated. Frustrated. Maybe even the drug traffickers did something with Andres's truck. Maybe. Another, but, but it was never found, though. It was never found. I guess my question was more about the logic behind abducting Juan Pedro as a drug trafficker. It just seems like when you're trafficking drugs, your objective is, you know, to traffic drugs and to do it as discreetly as possible. Mm-hmm. Kidnapping a young boy and starting this whole drama, it just seems like it's not really achieving your goals especially since uh since andres was going to bilbao which yeah, is true. doesn't really it do, it's it's not like it's a distance it close to the border sorry it's not necessarily even close to the border mm-hmm. it's just north of spain mm. which is not necessarily the northern part of spain that connects with france it's more of the western northern spain area where it's like it's not you know you would still have to drive around the sh- uh, across the shorelines to get to, to, to France. And it just doesn't make much sense to, for me personally, I just don't see how that's happening. So I think if there was any drugs related in this case, I feel like then Andres would have had some sort of a contact with the drug traffickers way before the trip even began. And maybe that the drug traffickers somehow caught up to mm-hmm. Andres and then kidnapped the child somewhere in that one hour in that mystery time zone between the breakfast at Aragon Inn mm-hmm. and the descent where they crashed. Right? True, sure. yeah. Why do you think Andres knocked the third truck off the highway? I never really understood that and and I think the only reason that I see only two reasons to do this reason number one is his truck is malfunctioning and he hopes to somehow decrease his speed Mm -hmm. reason number two is Andres is not in his right mind Mm -hmm. was there ever a history reported history no I'm going with, um, he's trying, he was trying to break his descent. Fair enough. That's a, that's a plausible explanation. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that same white van that was reported by the trucker with the broken legs was the same potential white man or the van or the vehicle who was blocking the truck mm-hmm. when they were doing the 12 stops? I don't know, actually. It's pretty bizarre. I don't it's, know what to think about this one. This case goes very deep into different theories, mm-hmm. and you could keep going with this. How, if if you if you would follow along with the package being removed from the truck's mm-hmm. cabin, how do you think that package even ended up in the truck to begin with? Maybe it was drugs. Maybe Andres, the father, finally agreed to transport drugs. Yeah. And did they kill him? I that's, I really don't understand. Maybe Andres agreed to deliver drugs, hypothetically, even mm-hmm. before the trip even started. Maybe he had the drugs. And maybe the white man or whoever was in front of the car mm-hmm. wanted to get them back. Or knew that he had the drugs. And, and wanted lo- it for themselves. For themselves. Mm-hmm. And Andres knew he would be in big trouble if he 
if that potential substance that he was carrying in the package was taken from someone or he was also fearing for his life because maybe these are some hijackers that are trying to hijack his whole operation do you think he was tailed i think there's a likely chance that he was tailed yeah he was tailed and he was maybe pausing and stopping um to check if he was actually tailed and then that 20 seconds they knew uh he there were being they were being tailed and under left. under this scenario mm -hmm. if he's running away with the package where is juan pedro maybe they they knew or they sensed that they were in danger and they let juan pablo pedro pedro out no but this is amazing mm -hmm. this is amazing thought process i would have never came to this conclusion like you're really good at connecting these dots so wait. i don't know no yeah that's the 20 stop that's the 20 second stop mm -hmm. they stopped and they told pedro get out or wait here mm -hmm. as they were escaping the white van that wanted their package yeah and then and then what and then pedro just died in the wilderness or, or the same white van found him later or some good samaritans picked him up yeah no but this is an, a line of thinking i've never considered what if what if andres mm -hmm. had something in his truck and he was being chased by some drug traffickers or something along those lines mm -hmm and he stopped and told pedro to get out of the truck yeah for a bit we'll we'll get right back we'll get back to you mm -hmm. and then proceeded to run away and crashed yeah this is i just don't see how i could even i don't see how i could debunk this line of thinking yeah well, maybe they were just trying to i don't know confuse the car chaser and they were hoping to get back to Juan Pedro confused as if like they were trying lose. to dis distract yeah, yeah. they used their own son as a distraction no not really more like they're trying to lose the car chaser are they trying to hide from them and then go back for Juan Pedro I don't know just yeah. shooting random thoughts here no there. but it, it's working so far so keep doing that so yeah generally speaking we now have arrived mm -hmm. to our last theory and i find this theory also um kind of believable mm -hmm. what if juan pedro was dead before the accident even happened yeah what if he somehow accidentally was killed by the family mm -hmm. members and what if during the descent they were under so much stress and 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 agony and anxiety about what happened to pedro that the father just started driving erratically or the mother was fighting with the father over the wheel and that led to their death Oh, where, where is Juan Pedro in this scenario? Maybe if he was killed by mm -hmm. accident some time ago, maybe they just stashed his body somewhere nah. down the cliff where the body would have never been found. Nah, this one's a little too wild for me because looking back at the pictures and as you mentioned, there were cassette tapes for children. Juan Pedro seemed to be a kid that was loved. That's true that is true i agree on with that one mm -hmm. and i don't think the parents would ever just toss his body out yeah that is true that's very brutal that's a brutal way to kind of it's not end, even humane and this very happy family trip yeah i don't think you would do that to a stranger and let alone you would do that to your own kid yeah and actually, remember when I said that this was the last theory? Mm -hmm. I actually have two more theories. Oh, there we go. So another theory is that maybe Juan Pedro actually was alive after the accident and wandered into the wilderness where he later died. I would go for this one personally. Because he was 
in a truck with sulfuric acid. What if some of it was sprayed on him and he his bo his body was burning and there was a river nearby. It's not necessarily super nearby. It's not mm -hmm. super obvious. But maybe he he somehow saw that river earlier on in the trip and he was running towards the river to wash up and he but I still wouldn't died. understand. Yeah, sorry. I still wouldn't understand how a kid do with no seatbelt on would survive this whole crash. Yeah, that's true. It's an unlikely outcome. Yeah. I mean, possibly he was not with them when they ascended, when the parents ascended up there, and somehow he ended up alive. But I don't think... I could never imagine him alive when he was with them. You know what I mean? Possibly by some miracle, maybe the mom knew what was happening, stashed him somewhere, protected him. Yeah. And the last theory is this, that Juan Pedro by accident mm -hmm. was somehow buried with the sand and limestone. Maybe by he, accident? Yeah, because you've seen the pictures from the accident. People, the rescue teams had the gas masks. There was a lot of smoke. Mm -hmm. Many explosions were happening. Maybe Juan Pedro's body was somewhere tangled in somewhere. Mm -hmm. But since it wasn't super obvious that Juan Pedro was there and the rescue teams didn't even know that this boy was traveling with the family, mm -hmm. that they were so, so um, urgent yeah. with trying to put lime, Control lime it, yeah. and sand on the sulfuric acid and kind of avoid the disaster mm -hmm. that he accidentally buried Juan Pedro's body unknowingly and that his body was buried somewhere there and that this is almost like Occam's razor mm -hmm. like almost the most simple solution you know how we could go into all of these wild conspiracy theories with very little evidence the most simple reason the most simple explanation would be that he was on the truck, in the truck, and that he did die, and that the crews that we see pictures with, mm -hmm. gas masks and see the amounts of sand and yeah. lime being poured, maybe his body was tangled in somewhere, mm -hmm. and they just poured lime or sand on top of his body, or, and he was never found. Or maybe he was part of the explosion. You mentioned there were explosions. I think in that scenario, then probably some sort of evidence of his body mm, would have been recovered. Yeah. But what do you think about that last one? That, that yeah. I mean, they did not know that there was a kid in there. No, they did not know. The first rescuers, the one, the ones carrying lime and sand, they did not know. So there's a huge possibility that he was there. unknowingly, unintentionally buried. Yeah. Well, this is where I would like to wrap up because I don't have any other things to add. Yeah, me too. I hope you guys enjoyed this story and us talking about the case. Thank you for suggesting it. Mm, and let us know what you think. And also, please leave more case suggestions. If you have some, of course. Also, please leave a like if you liked this <laughs> content. On top of that, please tell us what you think we could do to improve the podcast. We're always trying so hard every week to improve, and we're going to keep trying. So thank you for listening, and we'll see you on the next podcast episode. Bye. Bye.